This week, Vice President Kamala Harris visited Monterey Park, California, the scene of that mass shooting last week, and she called for Congress to act, to act. She didn't exactly say what they should do, but she wants Congress to act. One presumes she wants Congress to institute more gun control laws, maybe even ban certain types of guns, you know, like those laws they have in, in California where the Monterey Park shooting just took place and where there was another mass shooting just a couple of days later. More laws. Well, last I checked, California had a whole lot of laws against guns, and it doesn't seem to make a big difference. So what's really happening here? Let's bring in John Lott, who is not only the president of the Crime Prevention Research Center, but also wrote the book, More Guns, Less Crime. John, thanks for joining us. It's great to talk to you again, Larry. So uh, what gun control laws or gun bans that could be instituted from the federal level, like Kamala Harris is suggesting, uh, would have actually prevented these horrific shootings that took place in California? Well, I mean, I want to do something. I want legislation to be passed, but I want legislation to be passed that actually matters, that would actually go and do something to stop these types of attacks. To me, the lesson from California isn't that they don't have enough gun control laws. Uh, the gun control groups actually rate California as having the strictest gun control laws in the country. To me, the lesson is the problems that are created by the laws that they already have. Uh, you know, you, you look around the country, California has very few concealed carry permits that are issued there. In San Mateo County, they have one permit for every 24,000 plus adults that are there. Uh, in Los Angeles County, where the other attack occurred, they have one concealed carry permit holder for every 5,500 adults that are there. You know, you look at the right to carry states, the 43 right to carry states that we've had, uh, they have about one permit holder for every nine adults. And you see this in other statistics. If you look at active shootings in the United States from 2014 uh, to 2021, uh, you have more than a third of the active shooting. These are cases where guns fired in public, not involving some other type of crime like a robbery or a gang fight over drug turf, anything from one person being targeted and missed all the way up to a mass public shooting. Over a third of those attacks were stopped by law-abiding citizens with guns. You know, these killers may be crazy in some sense, but they're not stupid. Their goal is to go and kill as many people as possible. And they know if they go to a place where victims aren't able to go and defend themselves, they're going to be a lot more successful in doing it. So, you know, we hear things like background checks on private transfers of guns, and the number one thing that Democrats have wanted to push for for years. There's not one mass public shooting this century that would have been stopped if such a law had been in effect and perfectly enforced. You, you know, the assault weapons ban, that you have in California. California's had an assault weapons ban for decades. You know, so now they're talking about semi-automatic pistols that yeah. they want to go. So one suspects then, forgive me for thinking that politicians are being cynical here and exploiting this human tragedy for their own purposes, but we know that Republicans, for the most part, side with the Constitution, side with the Second Amendment, and their base, the people who vote for Republicans, tend to recoil at the idea of gun control laws like this because they want to protect their Second Amendment rights. So when a Kamala Harris comes in and says that Congress must act, and the Republicans, of course, are now in charge of Congress, it appeared, knowing that none of these laws would actually make a difference, and she knows that. She was the Attorney General of California. She knows what laws are in place in that state. She's really just exploiting these deaths. She's really just trying to divide this country even more, knowing that this is just a political talking point that's going to rile people up. Right. Well, I think it's just their way of saying you've got to vote for Democrat so that we can go and pass these types of laws that they want to go and have. Uh, you know, I wish they were pointing to things but that actually... John, you're right. I hear you. But again, I want to keep pointing out, this is California. Democrats have been in charge with a veto-proof majority in Sacramento for 20 years now. Any gun control law they want to pass, you know, what do you mean, vote for more Democrats? That's all they do in California. I know, but Kamala Harris is speaking, I think, to a broader audience right. uh, for the country as a whole, not just with you know getting more Democrats elected in California. I agree with you. 
you know, it's hard to think of a gun control law that they haven't passed in California that Democrats in other parts of the country haven't tried to go and push for. So, look, um, you know, the problem that you face with these types of gun control laws is that you're primarily going to disarm law-abiding good citizens relative to criminals. And to the extent that you do that, right. make it relatively easier for criminals to go and commit crimes because people aren't going to be able to go and defend them. Yeah. In fact, we saw that dramatic video of the incredible heroic guy who wrestled this gun away from this mass shooter in Monterey Park. And, and it is. It's great. And he's a hero. Imagine if he had the right to actually conceal carry and he could have he probably would have prevented more deaths. Right. Because, I mean, it's not that easy to just as an unarmed individual disarm somebody who's got a gun and is an active shooter. But if you've got a gun and you're trained, not only can you stop the guy, but also, as you point out, the shooter isn't going to go there if he fears that there will be people here who are concealed carried, right? It's, it's preventative. Exactly. Do you want to sign in front of a school that says the school is a gun-free zone? Or do you want to sign in front of a school that says, warning, select teachers and staff at, at the school are carrying concealed handguns and will use them to go and protect the students and others that are there? Right. You know, we've looked at all the school shootings in the United States from 2000 on, and and there are thousands of schools in 20 states that have armed teachers. And yet there has not been one shooting where anybody has been wounded or killed at any one of those thousands of schools that have armed teachers and staff. Yeah. Every single school shooting has occurred at places where guns are banned. And you now you may have one officer there who's in uniform, but they have an almost impossible job. If an attack's going to occur and there's one person, only one person who's armed and he's in uniform, it's kind of like having a neon sign above them that says, shoot me first. Right. Because they go and take out that one person. Well, then they have free to go after everybody else. And add to that, when the left isn't trying to disarm Americans from protecting themselves and say, well, the cop's there, he's got a gun, they're also undermining any law enforcement officer who uses the gun to stop a crime as... as as using it inappropriately. John, before we let you go, though, I do want to talk to you about one other issue you've been writing about at Real Clear Politics, uh, because, you know, it's a quaint notion for Kamala Harris to say that Congress should pass legislation about guns, because, of course, the Biden administration, they're not worrying about gun legislation being passed. They're going ahead and uh, just putting together a new regulation about these things, these um, pistol braces. Uh, we talked about this with Jim Hansen on the show yesterday. This is a stabilizing brace that they are now trying to regulate and force anyone who owns them or purchases them to register. But this not only seems unconstitutional, but based on your writing, this is incredibly discriminatory. Th these pistol braces are very important for disabled Americans to pr protect themselves, right? Right. I mean, one thing that you will look in vain in any of the mainstream media is why these pistol braces exist to begin with. The reason why they were developed was that you had military veterans who may have been wounded, who may have lost part of their hand, may be partially paralyzed, who can't otherwise hold a gun. And so the pistol brace allows them to be able to go and use a gun defensively when they otherwise couldn't have done that. That's what it's used for. And to go and ban it or to ban any gun, foreign-made gun that's ever had a pistol brace attached to it, uh, you know, just makes it so that those individuals aren't going to be able to go and, and defend themselves. Uh, there have been a couple mass public shootings over the decades that have involved pistol braces. There's not any evidence that any of those attacks were any more lethal than they would have been otherwise, because it had no effect on these individuals' ability to go and have it. And yet, you know, as what happens so often in these gun control debates, you take a particular incident, and you go and you say, we need to have a broad law for this. But there's no discussion. The Bureau of Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms and Explosives has no discussion about whether this has made any attack more lethal. They have no discussion of the costs of these types of bans that are there. There's no cost-benefit analysis at all in, in their discussion. Yeah. They're just going to do it. And the people who will suffer the most are disabled Americans who have the right to defend themselves with a firearm, too. The Second Amendment works for them as well. John Lott, it's always enlightening and educational. Thank you for joining us. There's more to come. You're watching Salem News Channel. Connor tonight.